So I'm here to talk about emergent digital and internet technologies and how political filmmakers and uh, activist filmmakers can sort of use these technologies in a collaborative way to uh, do their thing. We have to start, of course, in the past, we're going to talk about the future. And this is a film from 1922. It's considered the first documentary. It's Nanook of the North. And what made this film political was that the filmmaker, Robert J. Flaherty, actually allowed Nanook, you see fishing here, to choose a couple of scenes to actually film. And uh, Nanook was also able to take um, specific takes of the scenes, and he was able to incorporate those within the film. And that's political because it, it moves away from this othering sort of thing where we look at the native, or the savage, as it were, um, as this thing that's lower than us, but actually being able to use technology and being able to be an awesome person like Nanook is. In the 1970s, a more sophisticated version of this collaboration happened with Finally Got the News, which was a collaboration between Third World Newsroom, which is a video collective, and the League of Revolutionary Black Workers, which was an a activist, awesome power, black power um, union worker, excuse me, union, that um, the Third World people actually came in and they trained the, the workers to use film making equipment, film editing equipment, and then so they were collaborating to actually construct the film. So specific shots and specific scenes were shot by the workers and not by the Third World people. So the power to the people, right, as Fury Phoenix would say. Um, we have a very specific type of politicization, a history of politicization, politicization in film, excuse me, that begins with the space of film in the 1920s and the 1910s during the silent era, where the suffragists, for example, or union people, or immigrants would go to these spaces, go to film places, film houses, and organize and galvanize and do their work. We see, of course, in film, too, since the 1920s with the Soviet montage filmmakers, the Eisenstein's dialectical model of filmmaking being political as well. But what I want to talk about is where this screen cap comes from. It's Fernando Solanas and Octavio Gutino's 1968 Hour of the Furnaces. And it's about a four and a half hour film. But what's really cool is the way that they exhibited it, right? In film, because it was shot on film, because digital technology wasn't available then, you have reels, and each reel is, holds about 10 minutes or so. So what they were able to do is go in and sort of if they're going to, for example, a union house, okay, so we can show how uh, neoliberalism and U.S. imperialism affects the union workers, or if we're going into like a rural town, we can show how this affects their community, or whatever. And they didn't have to show the entire film. In fact, in many times, they stopped the film so that they can galvanize and organize and talk about the film. And they say themselves that the film is a pretext, the film is a detonator, and what's actually important are the people sitting in the audience who are going to galvanize, and the film continues with them and the actions that they take, in this case, against U.S. imperialism. So this is something uh, that comes out in the 1990s. Um, it's deepest television, and they did a thing with paper type of television about um, anti-Gulf War rhetoric and um, filmmaking. So what they did was they sent out an international call for filmmakers, video activists, and all of that to film short films, demonstrations, speeches, whatever, send that into their New York headquarters, and they would edit it down into sort of our long programs that would be shown on public television. As it says there, this is the first public access television at satellite. This is still limited in the fact that it's only an hour and the videos that weren't chosen and the parts of the videos that weren't chosen aren't available to the public. So where tomorrow begins for political filmmaking is something like this on YouTube. In 2010, they did this thing. It's not political at all, but they did this project called The Life in a Day, where on July 24th, 2010, they called all of the YouTubers to go film their life for a day and upload it to YouTube, right? So this was eventually edited down into a film and nobody cares about that because what we want to talk about is this globe thing. We can actually search the tags and you can search by country and all of this. This is important because the film was edited by one person, Joe Walker. This, you as an audience member, has have the opportunity to go and, oh, I want to see what environmentalists are doing in um, Africa, environmentalists doing in New Zealand, or whatever it may be. So it has, you have the power to search. Right, and the video that was edited, the 90-minute or so video, right, they had 80,000 submissions. You're not going, they're not going to fit 80,000 YouTube videos into a 90-minute film. But the source videos, assuming that they're still up and running, are there for you to see until this day. So we have these websites like YouTube and Vimeo and uh, Ustream, which the icons are there. But this isn't necessarily a democratic. Um, process that you have to go through, right? I mean, because there are people who don't have access to this technology, filmmaking technology, and as well as access to the internet to be able to stream this technology as well. But we do have, I guess, strides in that manner, strides in that direction. For example, in the 1990s, the Chiapas Media Project was formed by uh, people in the United States and people in Mexico to give the power to the Zapatistas to make their own films. 
the Zapatistas are indigenous um, Mexican um, people. And they uh, distributed over 4,000 of their videos. Um, and you can see her there. She's wonderful. I love her. She's my favorite. Um, so I guess what I would leave you with is, is this. It's a quote from Solanas and Gatino. And they say that the camera is its proprietor of the image weapons, the projector, the gun that can shoot 24 frames per second. So go out there and film the revolution.